This is Isabella Johnston, the Intern Whisperer. So this week's tip of the week is that you do not want to take a one-size-fits-all approach. So we have already established for several weeks that managers should avoid stereotyping. Instead, they should create a workplace culture that's inclusive and equitable. However, this doesn't mean that all team members should be treated the same way. At the end of the day, each generation tends to have its own unique social norms, beliefs, and workplace attitudes that are not stereotypes. It is possible to implement fair treatment while making special considerations about the challenges each generation deals with. Your leadership style has to be flexible enough to meet the various needs of the team. Admittedly, striking the right balance is tricky, but again, getting to know your team intimately will help you secure better results. So for example, I've been talking about iPhones versus droids. So I like an iPhone, but I use PCs as my laptop. There's totally different technology. When I am talking with anybody inside of my company, I ask them, how do you like me to communicate with you? We use Slack, we use Discord, we have text, we have phone calls, we have in-person, we have Zoom, we have Google Meets, all these different ways that we can communicate. We establish what we mutually like and why, and then we make sure that is the platform that we're using to communicate with. Sometimes it's a give and take. You might have to be able to say, you know what? It doesn't always have to be phone calls, but we can mix it up. And that does allow for everybody being on the same page. Welcome to the Intern Whisperer. Our show is all about the future of work. This particular episode has a lot of emotional significance. It is where we turn the interns from being just interns. Now they are officially video production people. They have moved into their place. So we are welcoming Christian Flowers and Daniel Conti. Guys, say hi. Hello. How's it going? Okay. Now they have promised me that they will be really, really behaving themselves. And when I say they, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, I mean, Christian. So Christian has been the problem. Very excited. So, you know, for our audience that's watching, keep your eye on that guy leaning against the wall. Because, yes, sir. Yeah, that one right there. Yeah. So anyway, um, so guys, we know that we always start the show with five words that describe who you are. I'm going to go to Daniel first. Okay. Yeah. And you should, because like, I'm going to make you wait for being so rambunctious here. Daniel. What are your five words that you would use to describe you and why? Uh, My five words, um, that would be adventurous, ambitious, curious, kind-hearted, and passionate. Good job. You memorized them all. Now, why those words? (laughs) Why adventurous? adventurous? Well, ever since childhood, I've always loved to travel. Like back when I lived in Miami with my parents and my big sister, we would, uh, I would always uh, leave the house and explore the backyard and I would even sometimes escape through the backyard and wander around the neighborhood i would get in a lot of trouble for that (laughs) okay so that sounds like past childhood do you do anything adventurous adventurous now not as of recent but since my graduation is coming up i will be getting more into it are you jumping out of a plane no are you going to bungee jump Yes. (gasps) Yes. <gasps> oh. There's a um I live near Daytona Beach. Uh then there's a um uh an amusement park that's right next to the da- next to the beach and uh I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it out. It's like one of those uh those uh bungee bungee jumps with like the the ball. So, yeah. Yeah, that kind of bungee. You know, I got launched high up into the stratosphere. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. All right. You're super brave. I'm impressed by that because I wouldn't do that. Ambitious. Why ambitious? Um, ambitious. Be- I have a lot of goals and I, that are very difficult to attain for like the average Joe. I kind of see myself as a uh, slightly above the average Joe. Actually, no, I take that back. I do consider myself an average Joe, but I want to be more than that. And gotcha. I, I have the drive and the desire to do so. Okay uh and then let's see wait let me get back here curious curious um when there's something i see before me i'm wondering to myself 
is that really true or is that false? And I'd like to, there's a saying about how you should never just believe what's told to you, believe what you see. Although there is some cases where that can be contradicted, but for the most part, it's a, it's a good, uh, a good uh, term to use or mm. to rely on. Kind-hearted? Uh, yeah, kind-hearted. A lot of people say I'm a very nice guy and a very uh, polite guy. Um, that can sometimes be a bit of a, have a negative connotation because sometimes being kind-hearted can be equated to being um, a pushover, somebody who doesn't uh, push back if you feel like, like your boundaries are being pushed. My family actually talked to me about this yesterday and said, you're too kind hearted. The world is a nasty place. There will people out there who are venomous, who will sink their fangs into you if you don't like push back. And I'm working on that, but I'm going to do everything I can to retain my kindness. I like to hear that. So last word, passionate. Whenever I'm dedicated, whenever there's something I like to do, I'm very, I'm very, hyper focused on that that i i can't draw my attention away from it because if if my attention is drawn away from it then i the the wheels will be spinning off, off the wagon and in a different direction and then i have to wait for the wagon to be repaired and then before i can get back on course gotcha all right we're going to go over here to your um compatriot so christian your words goofball Mm -hmm. deep thinker opinionated detail oriented and punctual go explain <laughs> okay so i come from a family where we're always cracking jokes just kind of trying to keep things lighthearted because life is very serious i don't like being serious all the time like when i have to be I, i'll count it down get focused but i want to be able to create that space where i can be that person like everyone needs someone they can be comfortable around so like I've been working on that since I was probably middle school. Like I just want to be able to just crack jokes and make someone's day because everyone has something going on. Life is very stressful, so I'm just crack jokes and just have fun. Should be a comedian. I could see both of you guys doing stand up comedy, and quite frankly, you can do that. You can take a free stand up over at the Sax Comedy Club and take it, and they let you get up on the stage to see if does anybody else think you're funny. I could see you guys doing that. Like the crumb right there. Is sex politically eyes. incorrect? Uh, yeah, it can be. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, you can you can get away with doing that kind of stuff there. Epic. All right, deep thinker. So the way my brain is structured i always like to question and kind of figure out the meaning behind something because i don't i don't accept how things are kind of put to me like i want to sit there and kind of form my own like opinion on it and figure out like okay why is it like this why isn't it like this like i like to i'm in my head a lot because i like to kind of like i like fantasy so in my brain i have a whole like world constructed and how things are done what i've seen like i have multiple scenarios around it already like i'm able to picture stuff so i love deep thinking because it kind of helps me figure out what's going on with me internally what do you read for fun then at for that's deep thinking do you have anything uh my favorite book is ender's game ender's, what is that ender's game by orson scott card don't know it. so it's a, it's a sci-fi series but the way the story is it's just this so it's in space time they're fighting aliens but it's a whole group of kids and they're trying to figure out who the next like captain's going to be in charge like this entire space army and Ender is just like, he's just a little kid, but he thinks like a grown up in all these high stress situations, he's able to keep his cool and get everybody to follow a certain pattern because he thinks outside the box. He doesn't follow everybody else. He's like, I'm going to do my own thing and get, get it done. Like he gets the job done. Like I, I love that book because like when I was his age, I was thinking about candy, food, games, and girls, but him, he's like, no, I'm trying to figure out how to win this battle and save humanity. And that'll always be my favorite book to this day. I still think about those things to this day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really don't grow up. Your bodies get bigger, but <laughs> you, know, you question some of the other stuff, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. Yep. Okay, so your third word is, let me get over here, opinionated. Yes, I would say yes. That is the word I definitely go. <laughs> I know you've got an opinion for a lot of things. That's why I picked it. Because again, I'm in my head a lot. So I'm always trying to figure out a way to get around a lot of things. I think like I'm trying to cut down conversations, cut down problems. I'm like, I'm trying to just, I'm like, all right, I figured it out. Here we go. Like, I want to get straight to the point and just keep on going. 
So uh, there are times where it's bit me in the butt for sure. I could say that with confidence. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my pain is not needed, which hurts, but yeah. being able to learn how to not express it every single time, like I think I need to, like I don't. And I'm happy of like this, this internship alone really taught me that. Because in the beginning, I'm like, all right, I'm the one editing all this stuff. Why am I listening to what Isabella is saying? I'm like, wait a minute. This is her platform. She's your client. She's teaching you. So take your opinion and silence it and listen. And it worked out because now the episodes came out exactly the way she wanted it and we were good to go. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that I always like doing is every semester I work with interns, I like to take it up another level. So what we did here, we didn't take it up one level, guys. We took it up like three, maybe five, because we were doing closed captions. We were also adding the SRT files so that, you know, the deaf would be able to read as well as um, be able to view them. Um, all about accessibility. There was a higher level of quality in these episodes. We got more standardized as to branding. Super proud of how this podcast, this season, this particular term with you guys has gone. So thank you very much. Season very happy. Season five is the best season. No Se problem. Well, we have more season five coming. So I would say, yes, it will be the best. So over here, the next word that you have is detail oriented you need details for everything details bring your entire picture together you can mm -hmm. have the beginning you can have the middle and the end but you still need the little itty bitty pieces in between mm -hmm. because you don't realize like details are way more important than you think yeah little things add up to big impact mm -hmm. and that's like the main thing i was focusing on for all these years since i got into like high school ones like i I need to pay attention to the details because I'm like, I'm trying to kind of get through things fast and zoom, but I'm like, no, 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 take it back. Take those details, start using them, bring them with you. And like, I've gone, like, I'm very far from where I was back when I was younger. Mm. Like I'm very proud of where, where I am today where I'm going to go. Punctual. When I joined band in high school, because I did marching band. So I learned, they taught us Actually, in karate as well, when I did, I was younger. But like, if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. So, I was always you know, having to rely on like my mom or dad to drive me somewhere or a friend. And once I actually got my car when I got to when I actually like, graduate high school, I was like, okay, now I'm in charge of getting to where I need to be. Like, I like I like being in charge of myself. So that way, I'm like, all right, I have a place to go. I'm gonna get there because I'm trying to be there as early as possible to help out get deadlines done because the most viable thing you could do is be punctual. You have to. I would agree with that. Yeah. Like I think that, yeah. Well, communication, I I'm yeah. going to pick communication. I think communication is a higher skill than even, you know, being punctual because if you're not going to be on time, you can communicate and let people, Oh, I'm running behind. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it helps to manage expectations. Yeah. With me, to me, I, I also do martial arts. I'm a, a green belt in taekwondo i am um, i trained at the ucf's taekwondo club and there would i would have moments where i was late i couldn't like i've had chances to like message first it was facebook messenger now it's discord but i never like messaged like saying hey guys i'm gonna i'm gonna be a little bit late because i was kind of ashamed because like there would be other stuff in my way and i live like almost an hour away from the camp from the main campus of UCF yeah. and it's like I I would feel like so ashamed of like I I'm too embarrassed to even say that I'm running late it's like, mm. it's like you know it's bad yeah mm -hmm. that's like I make sure I put everything on the man I'll be here at this time I make sure I show up earlier so it's, like, yeah. it's like for us like oh yeah, I'll be here at 12 I'm here at what 11 50 11 45 I've been doing you're usually here early morning. yeah because <laughs> I make sure early. like just like I give you the time I'll be there but I'll be there earlier just in case that way it gives me time to kind of you know and so yeah you, you never know place. right accidents there can mm -hmm. be traffic mm -hmm. issues your whatever horrible rain that causes mm -hmm. you to drive slowly right. all kinds of things yeah, I'm always calculating and kind of timing stuff and I'm all right I have this journey let me add in this 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 bam all right. So the next question that I'm going to ask, because we are not going on script right now, mm -hmm. what is the most important lesson that you learned from your internship this semester that you just had no idea you would have seen? And it can be about how you grew in a lot of ways. It can be how you were able to understand, you know, team dynamics or just whatever it is. But Daniel, you get to go first. All right. Uh, well, one thing I think I learned from this uh, internship most of all is uh, 
as I said earlier, the time management, because a lot of things that I wouldn't do before I did when I came here, albeit I was pushed a little by the both of you. I'm grateful for that. Nice to be appreciated. Right. Yeah. We got you. Yeah. yeah. So I, I was like, okay, I'm going to set this time for me. If something happens when a lot of times it did happen, I would message you and then tell you, okay, I'm going to be here at this time. So you improved in your communication also. Absolutely. Yeah, I would definitely say that. That was one of the biggest things that I saw you grow in. And when I was talking with your professor, not like verbal conversation, but I emailed him, I said, I saw you grow so much during this time that you've been here. So I'm very, I'm very glad. Hopefully you had a really positive experience. Very. Good. Christian, what about you? What is the best thing you've learned? How to silence my opinion. Just like I talked about before, mm. <laughs> because I like the projects I've worked on, I see them in one way and I'm like, this is the vision. This is what's, this is going to work. And then I, I'm like, wait a minute, this like, you're my client. I need to listen to you. And the episodes became way better because I listened to you instead of using my opinions. I'm like, nah. yeah, but uh, hopefully you knew that both of you knew that your opinions mattered. And you guys could pitch an idea and I could go, oh, you know what? That does sound better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your ideas could be way better than what your clients is. So the it can go both ways. So I appreciate that also. Thank you. Christian will only speak when spoken to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what is the hardest <laughs> lesson that you've ever encountered in life? that really changed your, your thinking or your heart, Christian. That now this is where you got to be super oh, honest. Yeah, it's not right. about the internship. It's just yeah. anything in your life. Honestly, everybody's going through something mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. Whatever stuff you got going on, it's not cool to lash out at somebody else. Like, it's not, it's not about them. Like, whatever, because I have that problem today. Like, whatever kind of issues I have, like, stuff with my family and things, I let it bubble up and take over me. And it's like, it's not worth it. Like, we're on this planet for a, a certain amount of time that we're done. Yeah. To me, sitting here being angry every five minutes doesn't accomplish anything. Like, no. I've been working on that since high school. Honestly. Like, I'm better than I was. Like, I was really angry in high school and college when you, at Seminole State. Did you ever punch a hole in a wall? Oh, yeah. I punched a hole in the wall. I kicked a hole in my door. Dude. I think that's something that every male teenage boy seems to do. Because my brothers did that too. It's because we, I mean, like we, we have a whole bunch of testosterone. Just like, oh, like I, I want to get aggressive. With Hulk, him. you guys turn into Hulk. I wish. He's I wish. <laughs> I wish too. I hurt myself. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> one time I, I put a, I put a dent in my family fridge. My mom was so furious. Oh my God. Yeah, that's like, hard to do. It was my, with my, it was my, with my two knuckles right here. I just Did you break them? Oh no, I, I didn't. It hurt like hell, but. That's okay. Don't okay. worry. Too late now. We can't say the F word though, just to be clear. Thank God. You punched a freak. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I saw my mom was watching the news and I saw these, uh, um, a protest. I'm not going to say for what, mm -hmm. and they were harassing this individual under what can I what I can only assume <laughs> assume is an assumption that they had of the person of their target of attack and I was so angry about how people uh, and these people were claiming to be an anti-violent pro anti-violence protest a bit of an irony there don't you think but they were assaulting the guy and I was just so mad. I don't even know why I was mad. It didn't have anything to do with me. I guess it was because I was just projecting whatever anger I had at that time onto what I was watching and just use that as an excuse to punch the fridge. Mm. Uh, mm. But, but yeah. And when my mom saw it, she was just pissed off. And I was just like, oh, damn it. <laughs> That's okay. okay. Right. You're, no hitting, you're hitting the words today. Listen, you're an adult. <laughs> I was, I yeah. was upset. But... Well, we we always say this show is not for children, mm -hmm. but I mean, you know, but to I'm, a certain point. But actually, the problem what I was lacking with my aggression and my violent temper is that I didn't have any way to properly, you know, what's the word? Channel it. Channel. I was gonna say exerted. Same thing. That's a good word too to exert it but then i get thanks thankfully i got into martial arts i did i got into kickboxing i did did your parents put you in there 
Yes, after constant nagging. <laughs> Yeah. Because like when 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 I lived in Miami and I was in uh, elementary school, I have ADHD, so I was diagnosed with ADHD and my and I was very hyper as a child. So, uh, my I had to actually go to like after school or summer classes just so I could stay in the same grade as my peers. I only got held back like once. It was during the third grade, but then again, almost everybody got held back. Almost. Mm. Okay, so here, fun fact, I. I got held back. I was born really uh, young and in the sense of everybody's born young. So never mind. <laughs> I started kindergarten when I was four instead of five because my birthday was in October mm -hmm. at that time. So at, when I was starting kindergarten, that was, you know, like normal. So that made it so I was not quite as emotionally um, mature mature for being in kindergarten. So I ended up, this is like, I had to repeat kindergarten. How hard is kindergarten? That's kind of embarrassing. But it, yeah, that's kind of embarrassing. it's not embarrassing to me. I'm, I'm not embarrassed by it. And I'm actually sharing it because that's one of the things that, you know, when we say something like that, you know, that can be kind of hard, then somebody else might feel embarrassed. I don't want anyone to feel embarrassed by that. So yeah, because, you know, you're making a kid that's too young to be, you know, socialized with the rest of the mainstreamed education. So by waiting another year in kindergarten, it made it so that when I got into first grade, I did much, much better. So there's not anything that's bad about being held back and being, or, you know, failing. Sometimes you fail a class and you end up having to start all over again. So how many times do people try to lose weight? We'll use that as the example. A lot. A lot. <laughs> so a we know lot. that there's constant failure. And so do we, do we want them to feel ashamed? No. no. It took me so. three tries to get my permit because yeah. of the road rules. I passed road signs hundred percent, but road rules. I couldn't yeah. do it. I, I remember I cried the last time I was with my dad. He's helped me read the manual. He's like, just relax. You got this. You studied. You're good. Just breathe. I'm like, but it's the road rules. They're so complicated. Yeah, but see, you were in the, you I were in your head, and you had to get out of your head to be able to make that happen. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Anyway, when I was when I started out, I was like, hey, can I do karate like a typical kid? And my mom's like, no, because you could end up hurting somebody or even hurting yourself. You have no self control, and I'm just like, well, that's. But great. see, that was again. See, that's a judgment. That's somebody saying something to you, and then that makes it so that the other person goes, "Okay, well, if that's what they think, this is a person that's very influential, right? Our parents mm -hmm. have huge impact along with siblings and significant others, into how we think. So we should filter that as humans. Mm -hmm. We should take it and go, well, is that true? maybe maybe not or we could flip it and go maybe it's not true and i want to go ahead and don't try be scared it. to question things just like sit there and because yeah. everyone has their own opinion on oh yeah i constantly like nagged even when i moved to the land with my with my mom and my sister and then i finally uh my dad did uh, convince my mom i was talking to him about it and he said he he was all he was never against it. in fact he he was in support of it but uh and and Back in Miami, it was mom's word that was the final say. So, but mm -hmm. then dad convinced mom, and then I got into I got into it, and I would end up being on and off because I needed to rely on her for a ride, and mm -hmm. sometimes that would affect me because once again, my passion. If I'm not heavily focused on it, if I'm not one hundred percent in it, I'm like falling in and out. And then I, I go, I'm off course and then I have to wait a while before I can get back on. And it's like, it's very, mm, I, cause, I would, don't want to say mentally strenuous, but. Well, it is because like, it's, it's draining. You, yeah, it, it is. It's draining. something you want to do, but you're being held back. Like me yeah. and my siblings, we all do karate. Huh. Like my brother's taking it the farthest he's an instructor, but like I did karate too. So like I went from white belt all the way to, I probably probably, but like I stopped it when I got my first degree. And I was like, I'm going to do soccer. I didn't do soccer. I kid you not. It's because elementary school one day I was goalie. I did so well at recess. I'm like, I'm going to do this. So I had my dad and mom buy me a soccer ball. Aww. But that summer I didn't do anything. I just stayed inside. <laughs> <laughs> Story so of my life. We're going to go and change our topic here. <laughs> you guys go to, please share the school that you go to. You're going to the same school. But um, graduation, your major, all of these accomplishments, these are major milestones. So Daniel, you go first. Well, that's only natural since I'm graduating first. Mm-hmm. No worries. I didn't think. What school did you go to? Okay. Okay. 
UCF, uh, University of Central Florida. I mostly, I, I did attend the main campus. That's just up the road. Yeah, you're pointing like our listeners who are listening like, where? can see you pointing. <laughs> so that's pretty funny. Okay, so what's your major? Um, radio and television with a minor in film. I. Yeah. You got your hands full and you took on two internships during this semester yeah. and worked a job. Yep. Yeah. So um, what did you learn from your other internship? Uh, that I don't want that. I don't want to do TV involving sports. <laughs> mm. But yet, you know, karate is a sport. You know that, right? Well, OK, I should have been more specific. I don't want to involve myself in non-combat sports. OK, I like combat sports most of all. Uh, MMA, boxing, kickboxing, judo, uh, all the uh, combat sports. Do you like wrestling? Yes, I love wrestling. You know what? I'm going to hopefully get this client, and they have, um, these are world-renowned wrestlers, and they're looking for people to come and work with them. So, ooh, your eyes are all big, too. Listen, I wasn't a wrestler. Yeah, well, you know, well, I'll let you know after I talk to them this week if they say yes, because they're wanting to hire and you know that could be a significant thing Wait, so what kind of wrestling is this is this like actual wrestling or like that w that tv stuff yeah the tv stuff okay oh are you talking about the team vision dojo? like wwe stuff no 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 what you're what you're talking about are you talking about like team vision dojo the... i'm not going to say the name of any of it yet okay okay yeah Sorry, it's not karate though okay. okay where do you go to school christian ucf <clears throat> again university of central florida go knights Oh, go there nitro. Go. Nitro, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what is your major, Christian? Real television, but they changed it. So now it's called NPM, I believe. Hmm, multimedia? I think so. Because they production. Yeah, they changed it mid semester, last semester. Multimedia yeah. productions, multi. Yeah, I don't know. It sounds I, I know like it should mean. be MMP. It's something with media. And then yeah. I have a minor in a film cinema studies. I honestly forgot my minor for a second. <laughs> All right. So what is your favorite quote that you have lived by? I actually have a Bible verse that I also live by. I don't normally tell, tell that, but it's on my vision board. You go first. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So I have to just a minute. Let me make sure I have, I'm not going to lie. Like I can do the verse, but I also don't necessarily first Chronicles 29, 11 through 13. First Chronicles 29 through 11, 13. Everything in the heavens and the earth is yours, O Lord. And this is your kingdom. We adore you as being in control of everything. Riches and honor are yours alone. And you are the ruler of all mankind. Your hand controls with power and might. And it is at your discretion who is made great. I like that because to me, it always reminds me of who's in control of my life. And that I... I can, I can relax. Yeah, that's it. That's a good verse. I like that. Yeah. What's yours? I have to change the word in it. Because that's okay. You can paraphrase. It's fine. So honestly, like the phrase I created, I started following it when I got to Seminole State back in 2015. I'm like, I have things to do. Mm. That's not, that's not the word, but like, I, I have things to do. Like, mm. I'm not going to let anything stand in my way to get to where I want to achieve because because of what happened when I was younger with my parents' divorce, I was out of control of everything. Yeah. So once I actually started getting older, I'm like, I'm going to be in control of what I'm going to do. I have things to do. I have places to be. I got a career I'm trying to get to. So I'm Sounds like a Dr. Seuss book. Yeah, oh, the places they will go, the places they will see. It probably is. I it is. Yeah. I hope so. Like it, it's It's been the main motto I've been following for years now. It, like I've stuck to it. I'm very happy I did because there are times where I just want to give up throwing the towel because I'm so burned out. But I'm like, no, I've worked too hard to get to where I am. I've come a long way from how I was when I was younger. So I'm, I'm, I got things to do. I'm going to keep going. No one's going to stop me. That's a good one too. How about you? Well, um, my most favorite quote that I've listened to was like that quote by, uh, <laughs> this is going to sound cliche, but uh, by Bruce Lee. Okay. The be water quote. Oh, I love that quote. Oh, what the, is it? It's uh, empty your mind, be shapeless, formless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put water into a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Yeah. Although recently I have uh, 
gotten a I've uh, really admired this quote by one of our presidents, Calvin Coolidge, is about perseverance, which I want to read right now. Nothing in the world can take the place of pers persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan press on has solved and always will solve the problems of the human race. That's a good quote. Oh yeah, very great. I've actually started uh, looking up some of our presidents and some of their uh, awesomeness. And recently I found out about a uh, Teddy Roosevelt, our 26th president. And I have to say he is the coolest, most macho president mm -hmm. that I aspire to be like. Mm, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, good choices. Mm -hmm. So my next question is, how much money do people need to be happy? Whoever wants to take that question first can go. You don't necessarily need money to be happy. I mean, it does help, but it doesn't, yeah. you don't necessarily need it. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, actually, that's a poor choice of words. You do need money in a way to be happy, but it, it shouldn't be what you desire and you want. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, the, see, money is obviously a necessity for life to have a house, to have money. If you have enough to uh, get, if you have more, uh, if you have enough money to get by and then some, you, you're, that's enough to be happy because then you're, you're so financially secure. If you've got more money, you can get more resources, but money is not the, oh, sorry, I'm getting tongue tied. Money is not the source of happiness. Money is definitely, it's a tool that can get tool, you, that can get you happy, that can get you, that can move you along happy. and you can share with others. Exactly. But what true happiness lies, in my opinion, is family. Mm, yeah. Things of the heart. How exactly. about you there, Christian? I feel like back then, probably a couple million, but since re inflation keeps rising, like things are like, I remember when I, before I was driving, like I remember senior year, I think gas was 119. Mm -hmm. And the second I started driving, a year later, it bumped up to two dollars and onward. And now it's like four, almost five dollars. It's going back down. I think it's like <clears> it is going down. Something. Thank God. Yeah. Like I want to be financially stable. I don't want to be rich. I just want to be able to maintain a home and have my space, and I'm okay. Like I don't, I don't need to be rich, and like I'm okay with that. Just give me financial hmm. stability, and I'll be okay. So I went on this mission trip. You probably guys have heard me say this, but I went on this mission trip, and it was. Um, in partnership with my church, as well as a group called Esperanza. It was in the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I did not want to go on, I was like doing battle with God. Like I thought I could win, but you know, it doesn't work that way. Anyway, I was there for a week and I saw people that were truly living like in poverty. They had, they had a house and they were grateful for the house. Mm -hmm. It had dirt floors they're grateful for having dirt floors because there was a house over it. They would throw their trash on the street and they didn't have trash cans or trash trucks, but people drove around in pickups and shoveled it and put it in the back of the trash of the pickup. Policemen walked around with machine guns and transportation was scooters like what we have downtown and people, there's like three people fitting on a scooter. How is that even possible? And minivans. You couldn't flush toilets because the toilet paper would cause problems because Dominican Republic is an island and their sewers and their water systems are awful. So you, any toilet paper had to go into trash receptacles and dogs and chickens were security systems. There's more than even that. But at the end of the whole trip, I sat there and coming back and my pastor asked me, he said, what, what did you think? And I said, you know what? They are filled with joy. They love Jesus. They just, they're so grateful for everything they have. They see the positive in, in what it is that doesn't mean they weren't experiencing hardships because they did. Mm -hmm. They absolutely did. This one woman had a bodega in the front of her house and yet she was fighting AIDS. So there was all of these things. There was a gentleman that could not walk, but yet he was able to fix motorcycles and he's sitting on the ground, cement ground, fixing motorcycles. The point is, is that do we need money? No, we don't need it. But it does give us a certain amount of security. Security, we think it's fleeting. 
but comfort. And how much money do we really need? I sit here and I look at the money of things I might buy and then I throw away and I go, I discard something so easily when how could it be repurposed or shouldn't we be better stewards of the world and even how we spend money? So the $2 million, you have $2 million, Christian, what would you do with that $2 million to, that would give you the security because you're going to spend it mm -hmm. or you're going to invest it. And if you're going to invest it, what are you invested in to have that security? I would definitely invest it into whatever projects I'm trying to do. Like, I'm, like I make sure I get like the gear I need mm -hmm. to start producing quality things. Like that's what I've invested in. Like I make sure I have myself an apartment, of course, and then whatever's left, I'll see if I could, you know, apartment savings, and then put everything else into like what I'm trying to build. Mm -hmm. Me, if I had two million, well, uh, fortunately, what I need, what I ha need to. Uh, to move forward with with work is very minute so i don't really have to spend that much money but if but what i would like to buy with two million is kind of a i would like to buy land mm. and so i can build my own small but luxurious looking two-story house with a big parking with a big drive-in and a and a couple of uh separate uh, car garages uh, so i can like have more than one car I like cars. Hmm. Who doesn't like well, if now if I could have any kind of car. Well, I would have three cars, pickup truck, just because I want to go mudding. Mm -hmm. I would want to buy a Porsche Carrera. I went down and drove one and I bought a picture of it. So I went, okay, well, if that's what I have, I have, but then just a regular car, just a regular SUV, just so that people can get it. So one is for both are for fun, the Porsche, and then the other is just for fun. But I sat there and went, gosh, that seems yeah. kind of wasteful. But, you know, nonetheless, I would do. What kind of car would you buy? I would also, No limits. I would have, I'd have, uh, for starters, I'd have three cars. Uh, a normal uh, four-door car, a pick uh, SUV, and a sports car. The, the I'll start with the SUV because it's actually kind of a, a common car that you would see around Florida. Uh, first, it would be the uh, Ford Bronco. The mm -hmm. uh, newer one. That's yeah. a good car. It's a good car. I, I like it. I, I want to drive one now. <laughs> mm -hmm. The second would be a modified 63 Lincoln Continental. Ooh. Funny story. Ooh, that's a good car. Too. Funny story, actually. I was driving down uh International Speedway and I passed by the, this this tricked out all black Lincoln Continental. And I thought to myself, that is such a nice car. And I just like, I looked it up and I'm just like, yes, I want, this is a classic that I must have. And lastly, this car is going to be extremely expensive, way more than two top $2 million. <laughs> a Bugatti. Oh, dude. Like just the name alone, Bugatti. Like, Bugatti. Oh, so nice. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about you? What's your cars? I want a Mercedes. I really do. Any particular, do you want vintage or are we going for the new stuff? I'm trying to remember the model we had because it was the it was my grandfather's and my dad's car. It was it was back when I was in probably elementary school. Okay, it was like the it was like the black box car with like the the OG emblem in front of me. And it was a little stand and a little circle on top of it. I don't remember what the model was. Hmm. No pickup truck here for you guys. I don't, I don't, I don't like big cars. Big cars. Yeah. Big cars give me way too much anxiety when trying to park and be on the road on my knee. I mean, you can use a you can use an SUV, the the Bronco, the same way you could use a pickup. I mean, and besides, it's like it's only enough for like two people at least. Like, but if you get like that four that a uh, four door one where you can fit people in the back, then it's like it's a lot bigger and a Jeep Cherokee, but like the older model. Oh like, yeah, it was the like, Cherokee. It was like a box mm -hmm. car. It's I want like, that. Yeah. Like, like Jeep. Jeeps are cool. They're not my speed, but if I can get an OG Jeep Cherokee, I'll take that as well. Yeah, that's good. And then, what's my last car? Honestly, I want to get a Jaguar or a Viper. I used to want a Viper. Oh, for the ooh, Vipers time. are cool. Yeah, those are cool. All right, so we're going to take a moment to acknowledge our sponsor. The Intern Whisperer is brought to you by Cat5 Studios, who help you create games and videos for your training and marketing needs that are out of this world. Visit Cat5 Studios for more information to learn how Cat5 Studios can help your business. Thank you, Cat5 Studios.
And we are back to the second half of the show where we normally talk about the future of work. But I have one more uh, question that I want to ask the guys. Do you think that gratitude can actually reduce stress in the workplace? Yes. Yes. Okay. How would you practice that? Just say thank you. Mm -hmm. You took the words out of my mouth. It's the easiest thing. Just say thank it, you. It is. It's it's literally the simplest thing. If you can't even just simply say thank you for your help, then you're a sad excuse for a human. Mm. Yeah, just say thank you. Like I feel weird when people say thank you to me. I'm like, oh, you know, you know, like I did the job. You know, we're good. Keep it going. But over time, like especially with here, I'm just like, you're welcome. Like I I feel weird getting gratitude. I don't know why. There's something just something about it. Mm. Although to be fair, I have had experiences with people where like they used to say thank you a lot but now it's like become so common where we help each other that we don't even need to say thank you we'll just like just hug it out yeah like, oh yeah hugs. that's so much better so, like, i prefer that so it's like thank you like i say thank you to like a lot of people yeah the same thing to me i'm kind of like oh. it's true what they say actions do speak louder than words oh they sure yeah. do I'm, I'm, bro- a, I'm an action guy i'm like i'll i'll get the job done i'll do stuff bam i don't need yeah. to that's okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So we're going into 2030. And as we go into 2030, what do you think? Because I'm sure that you've heard other people talk about like video. Last night, I was on something that Orlando Economic Partnership was uh, helping to sponsor. And it was the Meta Center. And everybody, it was an, an augmented reality, virtual reality event. Mm-hmm. So we signed up for it. We had to use a special platform to get into it. I chose not to do that, honestly, because it was like it was getting glitchy for me. So I watched it on it was live streaming on YouTube and there was like lions. No, not lions. There was tigers running (laughs) around the room. There was a T-Rex that came in. There was just like all of these little things that were just for fun happening. But it was amusing to be able to see like what what would that be like? So there was some fine tuning unity was helping to put it on also. So unity is a pretty cool game uh, platform where people can create their, an engine to create games and then push them out to market. But there was just a lot that was going on. So um, really fun. But what do you guys think the future of work and video would be like, I, you know, is it going to be augmented reality, virtual reality, what are we going to be doing? Are we going to be wearing big, bulky oculuses? I don't think so. Um, there's been a lot of speculation about Google Glass had, you know, ways that we could see through vision, um, like a one-sided type of a glass. But then they even have said, you know, it could be contacts. So what do you guys think? You heard that, you heard there that. is no wrong answer, just so you know. It's all right. sci-fi. You, were talking, you heard what you said? You the, the one glass is mm-hmm. talking about the... Dragon Ball scaling. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be a mix. So honestly, I'm thinking back to uh, Fifth Element and how that world was. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking about Wally. that was a Bruce Willis movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, Wait, what? Were, oh, the Fifth Element. Oh, my yeah. mistake. So, like, it, it's we're going to, ha- I feel like dystopia is going to happen at some point. Like, all these wastelands and all this, like, all the technology stuff kind of coming up, rising over and taking down because we rely on technology a lot. Like, we, we, we're a lot farther today than we were back then. Like, just look at animations. Mm-hmm. Look at how graphics are right now. Mm-hmm. So, what, 90s, 8 bit. I sit everything. here and I was watching something on Disney. And they started it with the the very first little Mickey Mouse and he's on steamboat, you know, um, Willie, whatever. And he's whistling do 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 do. And he has like little pencil legs and everything. Mm-hmm. And I went, I really like that throwback because I went, I wonder how long people will know that was the original mm-hmm. Mickey Mouse. Right, like black and white. There's like that was wasn't like now we have them like to look at Kingdom Hearts, the game series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like we come so far. With like 3D, like we're gonna have holograms like Star Wars and media. Mm-hmm. Like we're gonna be changing. Like I remember, like even today, like when we uh, on the other episode we we're talking about, like with robots. Like I'm still a terrified of robots because I robot. I'm gonna stand by that forever. And after watching all Black Mirror, technology is going to be watching what Black Mirror. Oh, Black Mirror. Mm-hmm. Uh, I only saw one episode of that show. Oh, it's it's really good. Like it it grows on you slowly, but when you actually sit there. 
and like take it. You in. might need to explain that reference for our listeners. What is Black Mirror? So Black Mirror is a show on Netflix that shows it's it's this world where technology is honestly at its highest peak and just it's it's everywhere. Like it's the way the way they construct the show, it's it's real. Like it it'll paint a picture. Like okay, I can see that happen. Like we have it today where we have you know Siri, we have Alexa in your house. You go Google, hey Google. You know, turn off lights, set timer, like control your house. Like think about the movie Smart House. We're getting to that point now. Like where we have Alexa, we have Tesla, we have all these like voice activated Siri, stuff, Cortana, exactly. Just like Halo, like we have all this stuff in our houses, controlling things that we can do ourselves. Oh yeah, and will you did you say Alexa? Yeah. Oh dang it. Yeah, but, like we have Alexa, Siri, Cortana, like Google Voice. Like we're gonna be going a lot farther because like we're we're gonna be needing engineers for sure in the future. Although you know, I have to say I'm a little skeptical about the future of technology because. If you think about it, a lot of our of our despite all the technological advancements, it seems like the power sources just get weaker and weaker. Like, oh yeah. Do you have any idea? I do you have any idea how many smartphones I've burned through these past like three years? Like I've already well, to be fair, I've only I get a new one every year now. Exactly. Like, I've had my XR, but, I think, for like three, four. Years. But here's the funny thing is that <laughs> my first phone was a was a slider phone. It was a Samsung Strive. Back when I was in high school, this was like that was my second phone. My first phone was a Motorola Razor. But yeah, that thing that thing lasted me for that thing lasted me from middle school to like my second year of high school. Mm-hmm. So all so five years, no no problems, nothing. And it, I, in my honest opinion, I think it could last a nuclear explosion. Oh wow! So as as nice as it as it is that. Our technology has advanced in so many great ways. The power sources is just keeps getting weaker. And I I'm a little skeptical as to how <clears> it's <throat> going to be in the future. Hopefully they work it out, but uh yeah, you know, they use rare minerals to build phones. And so what is it that we're going to use that could replace that? Mm-hmm. You know, so there's there's a lot to be thinking about. Every every decision that we make, it does impact our our world our ecosystem and we really need to think through is this something that's just a a whim something that we just want or is it something that could be making the world a better place they're probably find a way to build a tower or something that kind of runs with energy like i'm thinking about like x-men there's one episode where storms a different planet and they have a gigantic tower that kind of goes with electricity and stuff. And it's like, it powers everything. Just like Black Panther with Wakanda. <laughs> like, we're going to we're gonna figure out some way to kind of power everything from one source. But yeah. it's also going to be a crutch because once we lose that source, we're done. It's too bad that there's no uh, unlimited supply of vibranium or adamantium. Right? Like the amount of stuff that or anything do. even sim Or anything that's closely resembled. Or any real life element that closely resembles those. There probably is. We just haven't discovered it yet. <laughs> I'm, mm-hmm. I'm surprised we haven't yet. So, um, what is you think? What do you think robots would be like? Because personally, I'm a fan of Wally. You know, I like that movie a I lot. Love Wally. Yeah, and I I think that there's whether it's Mad Max or Wally mm. or Guardians of the Galaxy. There's something that you see in all of these movies. And there's a lot of automations. There's a lot of things that can be robotics. You know, you're looking at each other, going, "What?" I don't Detroit, remember Detroit Mad Max having human. having robots. Not not necessarily in there. It's in time, so. Oh. But yeah, you're right. But there's something. There's a consistent thread in there. Is that we we are all technologically advanced and then boom something happens we're not like dinosaurs where we're eradicated but like look up what detroit could happen become human. Uh, look up what detroit become human it's a ps4 game mm-hmm. it's basically similar to how um what you were talking about about the movies of mo- about the uh, robots overcoming because it's basically mm-hmm. that synthetic do, androids and detroit become human synthetic androids developing human conscious and then wanting to uh defy their programming as um servants oh it's on steam mm-hmm. yeah yeah they like look at that and uh, exactly it's, it's violent and it is not appropriate for all ages 
that's a, a serious but, problem. But we're designing robots now. At some point, we're going to get more advanced where we can make androids. So do you think it's going to be like Terminator? Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't think about Terminator. Oh, yeah, it so is. it says, um, become human, Detroit become human, puts the destiny of both mankind and mm -hmm. androids in your hands, task uh, taking you to the near future where machines have become more intelligent. And honestly, look up cyberpunk. Oh, cyber, cyber. Yeah. So that game there, it's people are becoming like part machine. Like they're doing, they're giving themselves like bionic implants and such. Go. In fact, I actually saw the walkthrough. It's like a few, like only like two parts and they're not mm -hmm. that, and they're like an hour long. The game's like what, 22 hours? Like I, I did one playthrough and then I stopped playing because of all the glitches, but I'm going to go back. Oh, okay. okay. So it's I, 2077. Is just so you know, yeah, Cyberpunk it's an action role-playing video game developed by CD whatever and published by whatever. Uh, it takes place in the Night City, an open world in the cyberpunk universe. Yeah. I believe what you're telling me more than this little short yeah, blurb. Yeah, so in right this here. game, they're like, just like Daniel said, like they're doing... It's dystopian, futuristic. Yeah, so, but they're doing impotation. So like they're getting like, you know, eyes, they can kind of do retina scanners, they can zoom in and stuff. They have smart weapons in there. Mm -hmm. They have able to jump far. I can pull mantis blades. I can super strength. Like we're we're going to be augmenting our bodies at some point. Oh, oh yeah, it's it, already happening. Oh yeah, because you can look at how athletes have uh, any type of appendages, like mm -hmm. on their on their legs, and what does the foot look like? It's just like this like a, like a titanium hook. type of a leg, and yeah. then they can run Olympics in it. Oh so. yeah, yeah, it's cool though. Like you're giving people a chance to kind of oh yeah feel normal again. Oh yeah, I get, I get, it's. I'm happy that we are designing stuff like that. I'm just yeah. scared that we're going to take it too far and it's going to bite us. Well, yep. Well, Hopefully it can, it and it really requires that we, as people, that we are aware, aware, and we're paying attention. We we don't believe everything, like what you were saying at the beginning of the show, right? Don't believe everything that's out there. I would say that in the classroom too. I would tell students. Don't believe everything that I say. Just because I'm your professor doesn't mean that everything I'm saying is it's being filtered through my own conscious, through my own understanding. Do your due diligence and research things and challenge, you know, and make sure, well, I don't know if this is correct. In my honest opinion, I think the only thing that would cause, I think the only thing that would cause the destruction of, of our society is not the robots that we create, but the arrogance we humans have. In my honest opinion, if you look through a couple his if you look through a few dozen history books, you realize that the the fall and collapse of every nation always starts with when the the members of that society becomes stagnant, become lazy, arrogant, all mm -hmm. that jazz. I mean, just look at Rome, for instance. Yeah. I mean, that wasn't the only reason, but it definitely, in my opinion, was the start. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people nowadays. And as a Gen Zer, I have full confidence in saying that a lot of us have lived sheltered lives. Like we don't understand how the world actually is. And I'm mm -hmm. humble enough to admit that that I've lived a pretty sheltered life, but I want to break out of that that shelter and see what the world has to offer. Yeah. And come Stay back engaged. stronger. Okay. So hard to believe an hour has flown by for us. Seriously? Oh, man. Yes. Um, what is the best mentoring advice that you want to share with our listeners? Who wants to go first? <laughs> you got me again. Yeah. Best mentoring advice. Well, what I it just can be said. your own words too. It doesn't have to be somebody famous. Well, the best mentoring advice is what I just said. Stay humble. Uh, don't think you know everything, especially when you have lived a sheltered life. Always Always explore, mm -hmm. see what the world has to offer. I like that. That's really positive. What about you, Christian? My mentoring advice, you have one life to live. Don't be scared to formulate an opinion. Don't be scared to be yourself. You've seen too many people let people step all over them. Don't do that. Stand up for yourself because at the end of the day, it's you. It's your life. No one's going to stand up for you the way you're going to because mm -hmm. no one, no one think, no one's in your head. Like no one... It, and You're nobody lives in your body, but exactly. you. Exactly. Like no one's gonna understand you like you are. So don't be scared to be yourself. Like it's it's not supposed to be easy because you're gonna deal with people's opinions, but cut that out. Focus on yourself to live your life. Because once you're dead, you're dead. That's it. No, well, I don't know about you, but I'm going straight to heaven. Pretty I'm pretty going confident. Somewhere. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> How can people find you? You guys get to pick two social channels. You go first. You don't get to send it over okay. to him. 
Uh, you can find me on my LinkedIn. I think it's just my name. Christian You'll double check it, but no worries. It's going to be on that close card and it will also be shared in mm. everything we do. What's your other social channel? Instagram, King Flower Powers. King my, Flower Powers. my last name is Flowers. I love my last name. I was like, I'm the king. So is it name. at King Flowers? King Flower Powers. At King Flowers with an S in it, pl- power. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very good. All right, Daniel, what uh, about you? Uh, me, you can also find me on LinkedIn. It's uh, also, I think it's my name as well. It's Daniel Conti. <laughs> you can also follow me on my uh, Gmail, which is... Uh, no, we are not doing that. Oh, man. You told me YouTube. <laughs> oh, I was my... Gmail. You don't want to give me. anybody out your Gmail. No, no, no. Yeah. All right. Uh, you get hit with a bunch of cr- stuff. <laughs> find me on my uh, YouTube channel, Dan of the Dragon. That's Dan D-A-N of the Dragon. And- yeah. And I would tell people, go and watch that because he's really, he's entertaining on his YouTube channel. He doesn't name. have a lot of stuff on there yet, but, you know, stay tuned. Follow Daniel. There's more to come. Yeah. Well. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, this has been a blast. And I want to thank you. And this has been one of my most favorite semesters of working with intern talent. And it's because of you too. Honestly, like, thank you for the opportunity to just grow because we we didn't know anything. Like we took our college classes cool, but we don't have real life experience. Mm-hmm. This, yeah. this is, I hope my, like, I hope the rest of my life I have experience like this running jobs. I do too. This is the career I've been working on since. I want to see great things college. from you guys. All Definitely. right. We want to thank our sponsor, Cat5 Studios, and thank you to our production team, our video interns who have graduated, Christian Flowers and Daniel Conti, our music by Sophie Lloyd. And if you would like to have your inclusion tip of the week shared on our show, be sure to record your tip, send your audio file to info at e4c.tech and include your name, your job role, and where you work. We'll give you a shout out and we'll share your tip. Be sure to visit Employers for Change at www.e4c.tech to learn how you can create real diversity and inclusion while scaling your people for the future. Thank you for supporting our show and subscribing to our show on either Podbean or your favorite streaming channels.